Uh, first memory of going to the theatre would be, I was about eight. Uh, and my father, uh, and uh, he was just getting remarried, um, and I, it was my first experience of pantomime at the Kings. So, yeah, just going to the gods and the Kings, which was just that, like being inside a big gigantic wedding cake or something. Um, and first ever panto, and I remember Ricky Fulton and Jack Mulroy were the ugly sisters. Um, and yeah, it was just amazing. It was just, yeah, and that's where my heart's and ever since really. That's why I love the King so much. So, yeah. Probably I liked Theatre de Complicities, The Visit, uh, about 1987, which I worked on. I was originally an artist before as an actor, and I worked on that. And it was the first time I'd, I'd come across people who worked in that way. They used to invite us into uh, the rehearsal room every day to watch what they'd done, uh, which was just a huge honour. And then afterwards they were kind of, did you like it? Did you like it? Are you happy? Are you happy? Did we make you laugh? Um, and it was just brilliant. It was like watching adults with a huge kind of dressing up box uh, every day. Uh, that, was, that was fantastic fun. And really, really moving. I think I saw that show, I don't know, many times, and, and it moved me to tears every single time. And it, was also, it, it, it had everything. It was so funny. The physicality that was involved, uh, the design and the emotion, and, and to see a, a troupe and an ensemble like that, I'd never quite come across that before. Um, so that, that was amazing and really stayed with me. Uh, other things that stayed with me were in the 80s kind of site-specific things that became very trendy in, in the 80s is what I remember. So things like the tramway, when they did things like Briff Goff, Godolphin, a huge epic Welsh poem, uh, which was massive site-specific piece that people came in from Albert Drive right in and the, the, the place flooded and there was swinging trees above your head and people standing in disused cars banging things and stuff. It was just a new type of theatre. Um, and Dog Troop, a uh, uh, Dutch company who were there. Yeah, lots of shows like that. There was a whole thing, obviously a ship, um, the big picnic. Um, I mean, there was a time where people were going, what are you going to see? And it was, if it was a play with four people speaking or something, like, oh, oh, oh. There's a show, apparently, a helicopter flies in and puts in a swimming pool. Really? <laughs> so, yeah, a lot of those things stayed with me. Performance-wise, oh, so it's, gosh, so many people. But, yeah, it would obviously have to be Gerald Kelly, I think, uh, as a performer, in terms of just what I learned from. Uh, yeah, it, it, it just taught me so many things about energy, about the importance of the audience, about giving 100% every time, just about sheer craftsmanship and professionalism and how you conduct yourself and how you kind of steer the ship, you know, that will, I, without a doubt, will never leave us, you know, it's, yeah. Uh, if, I, if I had a choice to play anybody, I don't know if there is anybody I'd like to play, really. In, in real romantic terms, uh, but I think my favourite book is Peter Pan, and I'd like to do a very straight person of Pan. I've, I, I love Hook, uh, and I think he's the most misunderstood character. And I love all the themes in Pan of abandonment and looking for a mother and facing death and death being an awfully big adventure and all that kind of thing. There's so much, it's really rich. Uh, and the language is really right. So I'd, I'd love to play a straight version of Hook, actually. Um, Don Quixote I like as well, just for its romance and things. But, but to be honest, I'm really lucky and really happy so far at what I've had. That's part, I, I would never really look for anything. That's part of the fun. You don't know what's going to happen and what's going to be given to you. And I've, I have been very lucky a lot of the roles I've had, you know, to play big icons or, you know, a quadriplegic Elvis Presley. <laughs> Things like that, or at the moment, the thing I'm most looking forward to, fingers crossed, is to go back to playing Humphrey Bogart. So, um, yeah, which I, th I think I've pro possibly been Humphrey Bogart longer than he's been Humphrey Bogart. Um, <laughs> it's been five, six years now doing Casablanca on and off, and that's a lovely role to go back to and, and, and revisit all the time. Um, although I'm nearly 10 years older than he was when he did it. But, <laughs> um, but yeah, I really enjoy that. It's really rewarding. Um, you know, I think we knew it was funny, but but to make people cry, and especially the biggest compliment is there's, there's couples who come to see it who it was their date movie. You know, they're in their seventies now and nearly their eighties, and we make them cry, uh, but we make them laugh. And you know, you're playing with the family jewels. Uh, you don't want to destroy it, 
uh, and hopefully we don't. We're, uh, and, uh, so that's a real honour to do something like that and to be able to go back to it. And I, I like that. Anything else will be decided for me. A lot of my things, I suppose, have been influenced from film as well as theatre. I come from that kind of sort of first generation, generation in many ways. So even it was uh, theatrical actors moving into film and then yeah, my generation was kind of 60s, 70s, and my father was a film projectionist originally. So he uh, was all the big event movies of the 60s, so things like uh, all the Bond films, Zulu, Lawrence of Arabia, and things like that. So I've always, always been a huge Atul fan. Um, and I have his scarf from Casanova, actually. Uh, which was given to me as a present, which is great. So I've always really admired the tale since I was a wee boy in Lawrence of Arabia. Um, and I, I actually went to see him once, and uh, Geoffrey Bernard is unwell. And we, que we queued, my girlfriend and I queued for tickets, and just as we got to the box office, the woman said, um, Van, we get two left, love. Uh, and uh, my girlfriend said, you take it, you know, he's your hero and you'd love to see him. And, uh, but I thought it was being chivalry. Chivalry is not dead. And I said, no, no, I can't do that. And I stupidly regret it. I am. <laughs> so yeah, I didn't go. I had the chance to see a tool and I didn't see him. And I, I'll always regret that. I've always loved him. He's, he's just that romantic old school of hellraisers and fun. I've met many people who have worked with him or people whose father was close to a tool and I've heard great stories about him and I just really, really admire him, but I'd love to have seen him live. Yeah.